Well, Joe Scarf has spent his career drawing world leaders from Boris Johnson and Winston Churchill to President Trump and JFK. And what I love about it is, I, it always, like all your cartoons, it's brutally savage and yet has an undeniable ring of truth. <laughs> oh, great. I thought I was being kind to you. <laughs> is he actually smacking me in the face or is he just... More he, silencing. It's not a physical attack. He's gesticulating yeah. in right. his exuberant way. Yes. <laughs> and uh, accidentally. And accidentally. Wiping you out of the picture. Yes. <laughs> uh, it's something I experience every morning. It's absolutely lovely to see you. Do you worry about the effect that your cartoons are going to have on the people that you draw? Not really. I mean, uh, you're the exception because... Uh, <laughs> and not, not that I don't worry, I worry about it. I mean, usually I'm drawing people who are in power. Yes. Mm. and people who I think misuse power, so I can hit them as hard as I like. I don't care. And the other thing is I'm working in my studio alone. It's a very solitary pursuit. And I don't really think about the drawings when they go out there to a million people or whatever it is. I think about what I want to achieve here. So, in general, no, I, I, I'm not I would sorry. imagine most, most people, I'd imagine want to have the originals and frame them, even when they're being lampooned. I would certainly will put this on my loo wall. But have you had... There you go, the loo wall. Why is it always the loo wall? <laughs> I would because... put it... If you give me the original, John... No, you know why? I will put it on the study I have cartoons wall. in a loo wall, because, actually, you do want to have a laugh when you go to the loo, don't you? Some people say it's the best place to <laughs> con <laughs> contemplate them. <laughs> but do, do you but... ever meet people? I mean, do you go to parties and meet some of your victims? You've actually taken it back? Of course, but I, I, I try and avoid them. I don't yeah. really want to know politicians. I, You know, I, I, might, I, might, I once had uh, lunch with Ted Heath, mm. and he was rather snotty to me thereafter whenever I drew Ted. You know, it affected... Uh, the way he treated me affected my drawing, which You're is even wrong. you more really, I should lampooning. Be just, I should be really judging them from... Well, for what they do, not for the way they treated me. Yeah. Pierce gets um, sort of very irate about the fact we've all got a lot more sensitive and anxious. Do you feel that when you're drawing people? Do you feel, actually, that you now have to be a little bit more restrained than perhaps you were a few years ago? Well, I think that's probably true, yeah. Psychologically, you know, there is a barrier. But then working in a newspaper, you, you only have a certain limit anyway. You can't go beyond that. So I've always had a kind of a barrier there, but I know what you mean. Now, so what would you in these not politically do? correct yes, times, exactly. what it is you more not difficult. Do? I try and do the drawing then, then uh, the way I would like it, and then if the editor will print it, he will. Mm. But I kind of know they won't be printing some of these drawings, but those are the drawings that go into this book. Right. Yes. <laughs> OK, so... Brilliantly done, by the way. Oh, my days. This There's is... a pro if ever I've seen one. This must be the heaviest book we've ever had Fabulous. on Good Morning. It is. It's huge. It's gorgeous. Here we go. Just simply called Scarf. Such a distinctive, even signature that you have in style with those paint splatters is it... and beautiful, fantastic cartoons throughout the book. And But also, you have a memoir. I have a memoir. Out as well, Long Drawn Out Trip. Yeah. It's long, I drew it, and it's, a, it's been a trip. <laughs> we've reached, we've a, reached a point, haven't we, in, in global politics where it's almost impossible to out-caricature some of these world leaders. I mean, Donald Trump and Boris Johnson, I'm not even sure how you lampoon them as a cartoonist. Is that, is that actually a bit of a problem it for is, a cartoonist? They set their own agenda, really. You know, uh, when uh, Boris said he was the incredible hunk, he knew very well that people were going to draw him as the incredible yeah. hunk and they're going to write about him. Yeah. So they're setting... Well, Boris is a walking cartoon, as we mm. know. And, and Trump, uh, and Trump as well. Absolutely. Is that good Trump is my muse. Yeah. I, Are you part of the problem, like everyone in the media, where if, as you say, he does something every day and you end up doing cartoons on him every day, are we all part of the problem? Feeding fueling, the beast. Fueling the beast, yeah. Yeah, I'm afraid so. His laboratory must be incredibly full. <laughs> because, <laughs> but uh, I know exactly what you mean. I can't hit them hard enough. No. You know, they're so arrogant and that they... It's all grist to their mill. Mm. If you Who... make a drawing of somebody, it means they've arrived, it means they're someone... Who have you most admired as a politician? Difficult. But I... Um, Obama, I liked Obama, mm. and I drew him always a Superman because he had so many expectations thrown onto him. Mm. But as I drew him, of course, when he was in office, his cloak, his Superman cloak, yeah. got more and more tattered and his mm. uniform got more and more mm. 
worn because that's what happens when they come in, into power. They just... Um, well, he could, he could never... Hits, reality hits. Obama hits. could never live up to the expectation because it was just too fanciful to think anyone could be that great yeah. president. You know, the I reality mean, he, checks quite quickly. He made an amazing amazing leap immediately to get come from where he was to where he got. Mm -hmm. but. And what about a British politician? Is there one that stands out for you? Well, the one they usually associate with me is Mrs Thatcher. It was yeah. great, great material. So someone like Matt in The Telegraph famously does six or seven... Yeah. He'll rattle them off, because they're much easier cartoons than your great tour de force extravaganzas, if you like. Uh, and he would then take them to the editor and they choose one and does it. What, what do you do? Because yours are so complex and wondrous in detail. Do you, do you basically supply the cartoon and that's it? Or? Well, I've been very lucky I'm, ever since the days of Harry Evans in The Sunday Times. I've just presented one drawing. Yeah. Take it and I it. don't go with a rough, I don't go with a... Matt, in, by the way, is, I think, fantastic. Yeah. Um, and comes up with an incredible role of different, ideas. Isn't he? He's a kind of he's what they call a gag cartoonist. Gag cartoonist, but, but hits the yeah. point so yeah. many times. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah. Yeah, mine are more involved. Although a cartoon really is a is a simple message. Mm. The simpler it is, the better. The more it gets across to people. Do you have a favourite of all your cartoons? No, I don't really. I mean, I have people. I have favourites, mm. but um, you know, those that I think I've pulled up. I, as we all know, working in in, the, in journalism. Uh, you're up against a deadline and sometimes you can't produce an idea or the idea you produce is not good enough or you think of a better one later and all that. So they're not always good. They're... Well, you, well you know, the word genius is used a lot about people. You are a genius in your craft and I've watched you with great admiration from afar as a jealous rival. <laughs> uh, wish we had your talent. When and I was now as a mirror. subject. Uh, and now, yeah. Thank, thank you, thank you, Piers. Thank no, you. but seriously, I mean, you're one of the greats of Fleet Street, and it's a, it's a real honour. You're very kind. Yeah. So thank you very much. All right.